Hello everyone, today we're going to be doing another Ruby on Rails speedrun. This is going to be a to-do list, so we'll say Rails G to-do list, or Rails new to-do list, dash dash CSS bootstrap, dash J ES build. What I'm thinking with this is we'll restrict user accounts to only see to-dos that belong to them so that we can get that out of the way. We'll also have all of this backed up with, by our database with persistence, of course. Uh, because I know a lot of these tutorials on YouTube generally don't have that if they're like front-end focused. So this might be a little bit more interesting. Uh, the other thing I thought we'd do is we'll use Bootstrap with simple form to give ourselves some uh, better looking styling, at least on the sign-in, sign-out page. Uh, and then we'll have to change how the index works because it'll list all the to-dos, but we're going to want the checkbox to be a remote update. So we'll probably have to embed a form in it. So we'll CD into our to-do list. We'll do a bundle add for devise and simple form. That'll work just fine. Now we do need to generate the simple form installer first. We'll say Rails G simple underscore form colon install dash dash bootstrap. That should then work with devise. So we'll say um, simple form is not configured in the application. We'll use the default values. Use Rails G simple form colon install to generate the simple form config. Okay, whatever. Let's do a Rails G device colon user command. That'll not user. Rails G device colon install command. That'll generate the device stuff. We can do a Rails G device user. We can then do a uh, Rails G device colon views command. Next, we have to figure out what these are going to be. So we're going to do a Rails G scaffold. We'll call them tasks. Each one will have a title, a body of type text, a completed of type Boolean, and a user colon references. Oops, uh, let's do colon references. There we go. Now we can uh, go ahead and do a Rails S, I guess, to start the server. Oops, I have to do a code dot, and then we can do a Rails S. There we go. Hopefully that will start the server just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of all of this. Uh, it would be nice, oops, it would be nice if this could start the server. Uh, we're gonna come into our routes.rb and our routes.rb, we're gonna do a root to the tasks index. And then I'm gonna go ahead and close out of all of this stuff that's spamming me. We'll go over to localhost port 3000. We have to run our migrations. There we go, we have a new task that seems to be working. All right, let's go into our user.rb. Let's make sure this has many tasks with a dependent destroy. I'll wait for GitHub Copilot. Let's come into our, oops, our uh, task controller. There we go, I'll hit Control B to hide the side panel. We'll do a before action to authenticate the user. We'll change this to be the current user.tasks. We come down here to the create where we do task.user equals current underscore user. We'll come down to the params. We'll get rid of the user ID. We'll save this. We'll save the user. Next, let's come into our form. In our form, uh, which isn't here for some reason, I don't know why. Let's go into views, tasks, form. Uh, for some reason, my computer seems to be struggling. We'll get rid of this association for the user. And then in our actual task, wherever that may be in our index, I guess, this will render our task partial. In our task partial, instead of having this user ID right here, we'll get rid of that. And then instead of having just this task, what we'll do is we will open up a, uh, let's see, a simple form for the task with a remote true. The input, I'll hit F11, will be for completed as a Boolean with a label of false. And then we can do a end here and we'll save that. We can come over here and refresh the page. This will now ask us to sign in, that looks good. Let's also come into our application.html.erb file. And then right here, let's wrap all of this inside of a div for a ID or I guess a class of container. There we go. We can then do a dot row and we can throw this in there. That should cause everything to be tabbed over. And then for this container, let's do MT-5 and then we'll be good to go with that. Next, let's do a sign up with Dean at example.com and a password of password. And then, uh, yeah, so this is going to fail, of course, because uh, it's, oh, I guess that actually worked. That's pretty neat. Uh, let's go ahead and let's do a new a new task in here. We'll just say this is, I don't know, uh, finish this video. 
and uh, edit and upload it. Uh, upload it. There we go. And then we'll hit create task. This doesn't seem to be working in here because we need our controller to have in the create action a at task. So if we do at task, there we go, that should work. I'll hit continue. We now have our task. We have a completed check, check mark right here, uh, but we don't actually need this. Instead, I will give this a label of true maybe. Can we do that? Uh, a label of true is kind of not working. We'll just say completed and then we can refresh. There we go, that works just fine. In our all tasks right here, we have this, uh, but I would like it to look a little bit better. So let's come into our index page. Let me look at the timer real quick. We still have a lot of time. Okay, so inside of this for each of these, uh, we have our ID of tasks. Let's do a dot row. There we go, we'll wrap this entire thing in a row. And then each of these will have a dot call. There we go. Neat, uh, seems good. Let's do one more, another one, testing this out. And then we'll hit create task, go back to our tasks. There we go. Uh, I don't like this. I think it's better if each one's on their own row instead. So we'll do something like this. And then we want each of these to be something like a dot card maybe, like that. And then in our actual task, maybe we'll, we'll change it. Yeah, let's do that. So let's come into our task partial. This is gonna have a dot card. This will then have a uh, dot card dash uh, header, maybe. I don't actually know how the bootstrap cards work. So we gotta do that real quick. Uh, bootstrap five cards. We'll come into here and uh, hopefully this works. We still have three minutes left. I should be using my uh, splitting software, but I'm being kind of cringe right now. So this is our card. It has a card title. There we go. Let's grab the card title. Card title will be the task title right here. That works. We can then get rid of this entire card title. Our body will then go inside of the card text, just like this. So uh, this is gonna be inside of here. Card text will be the task body. That gets rid of that. And then we have this button right here with a button button primary that I guess will just be the simple form to uh, change the completed status like that. Let's get rid of this P tag, get rid of one of these divs. That looks good. Come over here, refresh the page. Uh, we do want some, uh, I guess, margin uh, of, of some type. I don't know, M-5, does that work? Uh, that gives us that. And then we want a P-5 maybe. Does that work? Okay, P-5 works. Uh, we don't really need this M5 though. If we have the P5, oops, what just happened? We have the P5, so let's refresh. That looks fine. Uh, the show task link though, this isn't really working, uh, at least not for me. So let's get rid of this, get rid of this, give this a class of uh, BTN, BTN-primary like that refresh the page uh, and then let's do this inside of our, um, I guess this is fine. We don't really need a link to show the task. So if we try this and then we click the check mark, we do need a way to, I guess, submit this on click uh, with the way that this works. So we probably want a, uh, let's do something like a f.submit and then we'll give this a, I don't know, uh, updated of some sort like that, I guess. Refresh the page that is updated. We will then say this needs to be update maybe is a better way to do this. There we go. And then we'll give this a class of btn btn-primary. There we go. Check update. And now we have a CSRF token issue. So we'll have to get rid of this remote true. And then we'll just force ourselves to refresh, I suppose over here, check mark, update, there we go, updated. Uh, but in our task controller, instead of going back to the uh, task itself, where we get redirected to the task URL, I wanna go to the root path, or I guess the root URL like that. That works just fine. Refresh, go back to task. We will then uncheck this, there we go. We will check it. And every time we check one of these off, like this, 
it looks like they get a green little check mark which is pretty cool um so yeah oh there, there is our timer we have done this in in 10 minutes uh so yeah this is pretty neat um of course you need a way to probably like delete these or something if you wanted to uh but this seems like a pretty uh pretty interesting way of i guess creating a quick little to-do list on your computer uh, and it is interesting to see just how quickly you can get something like this done right so yeah, hopefully this was interesting. Uh, it's always interesting making these videos, even if they're not like super uh, creatively inspiring. It is nice to see like what you can accomplish in 10 minutes. Like uh, if you look at some of the other stuff on YouTube, it would probably be a lot longer than a 10 minute tutorial to get something working like this, where you have like user accounts that you have to log into to see uh, what, what your to do's are. Because if I log in here, you can see that John Doe doesn't see the same things as Dean does. So I can create a new one right here, go back to tasks. So yeah, it is, it is interesting. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you thought so as well, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.